Hello and welcome to the introduction to networks module four, the physical layer. So we're going to start from the physical layer and go all the way up to layer seven. For now, so we're going to discuss each layer and see what each layer is responsible for. All right. Remember, I'm going to ask you to take some notes to prove that you have watched the video as we go along. All right. So the purpose of the physical layer is the physical layer when it comes down to is anything that you physically touch it the cables the connectors the nic cards the pcs everything that you touch and if you remember um uh, when we talked about the physical layer bits actually travel on the physical layer so all ones and zeros are traveling on the um that's what data called that's what the pdu at the physical layer is is bits right all right so let's take a look at some characteristics of the physical layer uh one thing you need to know everything that's encapsulated encapsulated from the application layer all the way to the middle of the data link is all done software and it's done on the host the transmitter before it's being transmitted then from the from the middle from the max sub layer of the data link and the physical layer this is all in hardware. This is where your NIC comes into play. And these organizations are the ones that um, dictate how the NIC should um, encapsulate the data into a frame and place the data into onto the wire, what type of wire or wireless signal needs to be transmitting, and how those, how those signals are going to be transmitted as well. All right, the physical components of the physical layer. So here's what I want you to write. There are the physical layer addresses three function areas, the physical components, the things that you touch and feel, encoding, and the signaling. And we'll talk about that right now. So encoding, what does encoding mean? When you want to transmit ones and zeros, you don't just transmit one, zero, one, zero. What you do in here, for example, is if you are, if you are a receiver, if you look at a signal and it's dropping, you're going to consider that to be a one. If it's rising, it's, you're going to consider that to be a zero. If you want to transmit two zeros in a row, so you drop and you come back up again very quickly and drop again so you can, you know, because we have to be within a certain amount of time, you're looking at the middle of the um, interval of time to make sure that you are dropping. So two drops in a row uh, within, like, say, one second, that will be considered zero and zero. This is called the Manchester Technique, the old... 10 base T network did that. Now, uh, 100 base T NICs, the fast Ethernet, they use a 4B, 5B. That means they're coding every four bits with a 5B, uh, with a 5 code. Uh, we don't have to really get into that into details, but this is good to know. Now, the signal itself that's on the wire, on a fiber optic cable, for example, this is what the signal would look like. A red frequency would be a one, and a zero would be, for example, a yellow frequency. On the copper wire, you could have ones and zeros like this, or you could have a wireless. It could be, for example, small amplitude is a zero, high amplitude is a one. Uh, if you're doing FM frequency modulation instead of amplitude modulation, um, low frequency is a zero, fast frequency is a one. Now, the good thing about FM, because you're keeping the amplitude the same, it's not susceptible to noise as in an AM. With a phase modulation, PM, you're keeping, the frequency is the same and the amplitude is the same, you're just changing the phase. So this frequency goes on. If you switch the phase, you go, instead of going up, you go down. That means you are doing 180 degree phase, out of phase. That means whatever you were transmitting, you switch. So in case here you're transmitting a zero, you're gonna be transmitting a one and you keep going. So if you transmit a one and you wanna transmit a zero, you just change the phase. Um, <clears throat> most encoding or signaling is done with phase modulation. This is what a typical ones and zero would look like on a copper wire, believe it or not. All right, moving on. Bandwidth. The word bandwidth, as we've, uh, I think we've discussed this before. Remember, bandwidth means the maximum amount of da data that's being transmitted, and it is measured in kilobits per second. 
just like the maximum speed on a highway is measured in miles per hour, bandwidth is measured in bits per second. Now remember, bandwidth is like the speed limit on a highway. So um, that's the maximum speed. That doesn't mean you're going to be going at that speed. Uh, throughput is the actual speed that you are transmitting. Good put is the actual good data because some of the throughput, some of the data is corrupted. So you may be getting a lot of data that's bad. So you want to throw that out. The actual good data that you received is what's called good put. So please write these down and including latency. Latency means delay, really propagation delay signal. So you need to know the difference between bandwidth latency throughput and good put so write these down please all right let's take a look at the copper wire the copper wires are the most widely used type of transmission media on a wired network and the reason because it's at least expensive and what we're doing is we're we're going to move electron in that wire and those electrons will have the movement of electrons have voltage potential to do work and the measurement of this voltage, which is the potential, is either ones and zero. So if you have electrons moving as what well, has a potential of five volts, that's a one. No electron movers, and we consider that to be a zero. All right, so here's all the different top of, types of copper wires. There's the unshielded twisted pair cable. There's the shielded twisted pair and the coaxial cable. And let's take each one at a time. The reason we twist the cables is because each copper wire will emit an electromagnetic wave and you want to twist the wire so that each electromagnetic wave is that is emitted by of the adjacent wire will eliminate each other out so there will be no emi electromagnetic interference but they are unshielded from outside interference so you want to make sure if you are using an unshielded twisted pair cable, you keep them away from uh, anything that transmit anything that emits electromagnetic waves, such as um, elevators or uh, because of any machineries, any power tools, for example, any electrical power tools, they immediately emit electromagnetic waves and they will disrupt the data that's flowing in these wires. Uh, and that's the most commonly used type of wire. You may use shielded wire. There's not uh, these are not as much used um, because they really create some sort of a capacitance and they shrink the actual distance. The unshielded twisted pair can give you up to 100 meters. This guy, the shielded twisted pair, gives you about um, 25 meters in total. All right, <clears throat> moving on. Then you have these are the coaxial cable. What this it is is you have a copper wire. And then you have a flexible plastic insulation, and then you have a woven braided copper wire. So number two and number four are on the same axis, two copper wires. That's why we call them common axes, coax cable. The, because the current flows in here, an electromagnetic wave is emitted outward. This braided copper wire will bound the wireless signal in here as it travels forward. So you may think of the coax cable is the coax the coax cable is the cable that bounds magnetic or electromagnetic waves radio signals that's why we use it for um, our dish network receivers or um, or the coax cable that are transmitted uh, for cable TV. All right, these are the different types of connectors that are found. Hardly ever used for data it's mostly used for video all right the unshielded twisted pair cable they are emitted for immune you know there are seven categories actually category five enhanced is the most widely used it can give you up to 100 meters and it can handle a gigabit ethernet cat six and seven can give you up to 10 gigabits but they're a little bit more expensive though <clears throat> These are the different type of uh, connectors that you would use on an unshielded twisted pair cable. You want to make sure that you don't unwind the cables a lot when you are, if you are uh, making a, an RJ45 connector. You want, this is a much better. So you want to make, because the more you unwind them, 
the more likely you will have what's called a near end or far end crosstalk. Crosstalk is where you have the electromagnetic interference may occur. All right, so we'll take a look at these in our labs. I'll show you what these would look like, even the at the patch panels and, and so on. All right, and I think if we do, if you took the class, the 119 class, we did actually construct um, one of those cables. Now, there are two different types of cables that you really need to do, either a straight through cable or a crossover. Although I'm telling you right now, crossovers are no longer in use because uh, we only do straight through. And what that means, you want to make sure that all the color codes from left to right is the same on the other side. So if you use this as a 568A, make sure you follow the color code from left to right. On one end, on the other cable, you use the same thing, 568A. So if you use both ends, 568A or 568B, you have a straight, straight through cable. And straight through cables are used to connect a host to, let's say, a switch, typically are used. If you want to connect two devices directly to each other, you might you want to use a crossover. But even if you don't have that, you can use a straight through cable because nowadays all NICs and switches run what's called an auto MDIX. They recognize that you have a straight through cable and they'll be able to uh, send the data from the transmitter to the receiver because Ethernet will transmit at pins one and two and receive at three and six always. All right, let's talk about the fiber optic cable. Fiber optic cable. Um, I want you to write down all of these points for the fiber optic cable because it's immune from electromagnetic interference. It's, uh, uh, it's the data is transmitted pretty close to the speed of light, which is about 300 million meters per second. That means it can go around the earth seven times in one second. Um, it can go a very long distance up to about six, 62 and a half miles. Uh, they use uh, the light emitting diode or lasers to transmit the data so it's the best type of cabling you want to you want to use why why doesn't everybody use it because it's expensive and very difficult and the equipment to maintain them and troubleshoot them can be very expensive so that's what it, and probably most the most uh, really disadvantage of a fiber optic cable is the switches the switches can be very, very expensive each port because it's always full duplex. That means the you, with fiber optics, there's always one port for transmitting and one port for receiving all the time. And each port can cost close to 100 bucks. So if you have thousands of users, that can be very, very expensive. There are two different types of mode. There's the single mode fiber and the multi-mode fiber. Single mode means you're going to transmit one wire, uh, one signal inside, so you transmit it right in the middle. This is mostly for voice, so please write this down. This is the care. Oops, I'm sorry. These are the characteristics of fiber optic single mode, and this is the characteristic of a multi mode. Thicker core, and you can send multiple signals taking different modes, different paths. All right, so they have a larger core. The single mode has um lesser core i'm sorry smaller core all right so fiber optic cable is now are they used in four types of the industry enterprise networks fiber at home like the fios with the verizon long haul networks and submarine cable networks all right these are the different types of connector the straight tip the subscriber connector these are the the, the loosen connector this is common that you'll see either the straight tip or the loosened connector, you'll see a lot of these. Or you can actually, we do see these with a for the multi-mode LCF. I don't see this as much. So actually on a CCNA test, <clears throat> I remember they actually show the pictures and they ask you what type of connectors are these. So you have to be able to recognize these. All right, and here are the different types of batch cords that you may see. And there is the, the there is the copper versus the UTP cable, but of course, you know, unshielded twisted board cable is a lot more expensive. All right, and when it comes to wireless meter, we'll cover that more in details um, when we get to wireless down the road. So we'll talk about that. But please copy this down for the limitation for the wireless. All right. Copy everything that I asked you to, and I'll see you on the next video.